lovelies, welcome. I'm so glad you could be here today. I hope you're all doing really well and having a good week or weekend. This is a timeless reading from when you um, see this. So we're going to be seeing what's going on. We don't ever know what's going to come up every week. There's some really special messages from Spirit um, that a lot can be general readings, but very specific uh, messages coming through as well. And so let's burn some sage here as well. I love this stuff. Just clear the space here for us. <laughs> oh well, I love my abalone shell. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to get high on this stuff. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's get started. This is so fun to do. Let's see what we need to know this week. Thank you, angels. Thank you, spirit. And thank you guys for being here. Because without you guys, this channel wouldn't even be here. Okay, let's see. Thank you, angels. What do we need to know this week, please? And I love chatting with you guys in the chat box below. Let's see. What's happening? Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, the three of air. Oh, no. This is a sorrow, forgiveness, healing card. Look at the angels surrounding her. Oh, that's so sweet that they're there, though, because we do have loved ones in spirit. Could be our family, you know, deceased family, our spirit guides. But definitely the angels are surrounding us when we're feeling heartbroken or sad. Um, and sometimes it can be depression for some people and anxiety, whatever it is, this is the heartbreak, okay? It's a feeling of, um, you know, sometimes we have to hit rock bottom before we can pick ourselves up and take time to rest because the card after this one is the Four of Air, which is the Four of Swords, which is all about recovery and it's recuperation from, you know, being on a journey um, and of heartbreak we look at here, okay? So... The two of air before that is about decisions and it doesn't always mean that this is set in stone what I'm saying here but the way I'm reading it is that there might have been some confusion around a decision that was you know had to be made and you could have made the right decision or you might have felt like you made the wrong decision but either way you're feeling that maybe something was out of your hands or you've made the wrong choice in something uh, maybe there's a lot of regrets going back in your mind thinking, what if things were different? What if I had have chosen this direction instead? I'd be at, you know, at a more happier place within myself. And there's that beating ourselves up. And with this, there comes a purging that is needed. So if we keep dwelling on things, which I know I can do, especially if something is unresolved and if someone has caused me a lot of pain, uh, and there's memories and it's very hard to overcome and counselling doesn't always work because the pain far exceeds that. Um, it can be very hard to be able to let go, especially when resentment builds over something that someone has done to us that is just almost criminal or unforgivable. And so when we look at the forgiveness, it's really hard for a lot of people to be able to get into that energy, especially when the sorrow is heavy and deep. Um, and this could be, you know, it might not be that. It could be that you've had the loss of a loved one recently. There could be the loss of an animal, you know, if you've um, had an animal go missing like your pet um, or your pet has died. You know, there's so many ways of looking at grief and sorrow. And, you know, the Five of Cups, <laughs> this is kind of like the Five of Cups energy I'm reading as well. But the Three of Air is definitely that pain. It's the mental torture um, it can be just something we dwell on and it can feel like we've been stabbed in the heart, you know, stabbed in the chest. It just feels like, even in the back, like it could be a betrayal um, that we've just found out about. So there's so many ways to look at this, but just knowing that no matter what you're going through, whether it be, you know, everyone has something major. It, you know, everyone's sometimes worse off than what we are going through, but we are still undergoing our own stuff and it's valid, regardless of whether it might be minor or major. To us, it can, you know, it feels major. So, you know, you can work out whether this can be healed. It can take a few weeks to heal, sometimes days for some people or years um, to be on that journey of healing. But whatever it is, it's about being gentle with yourself and knowing that you do have support around you in the physical world as well as in the spiritual world. And I do feel like Archangel Raphael and Archangel Michael are with you here. So they are letting you know that they are bringing in protection. They're helping you to have courage to face what it is you need to confront here. And 
just to be gentle with yourself on the journey here as well and you don't have to rush in and make any decision right now for some of you you might have to if it's a uh, you know a safety issue like for instance if you're coming out of a you know a domestic violence situation or, or if you're homeless and you need to go somewhere like that's obviously extreme stuff um, where a decision needs to be made but in terms of you know relationship issues or um, you know not wanting to just please other people you just need to maybe withdraw and just um, be around those who are close with you your trustworthy friends your best friend uh, your family um, a counselor things like that so it's really important that you do receive that support around what it is you're going through because sometimes we can feel a bit stupid over decisions that have been made or we just feel like a fool that we didn't see something coming and we do tend to internalize and blame ourselves and this is something that you don't have to blame yourself for even if there was something that you did that you feel was a mistake and you are like taking accountability for that or owning something it doesn't mean you're a bad person it just means it was a mistake and mistakes are the soul's lessons really there is no mistake we do things because we're meant to learn and our soul is learning on the journey um, and I do feel like there is a pet in spirit for a lot of you a dog I see a dog a little dog actually it's a little one and I feel like a little medium to little to medium sized dog I don't know if it's brown uh, what I see is a brown dog but it doesn't have to be that it could be symbolic um, but I definitely feel like some of them got the cute little, um, the droopy ears. So yeah, I feel like that's a pet that's in spirit with you, giving you comfort right now, um, as well for some of you. Okay. Not all of you, but that is just a special message coming through for some of you. And I do see a grandfatherly figure around some of you as well, coming in to protect you and to just give you that, you know, beautiful compassion and support here. So, wow, guys, that is just such a beautiful message. It's, it's quite intense, but I do feel like a lot of compassion coming in around you. And you might, you know, there might be people who step forward to help you that have heard along the grapevine that this has happened to you um, or you're undergoing something or you've reached out, whatever it might be. It could even be a Facebook status. Um, and somebody who you least expect might reach out to you. Um, to you know have a chat with you or to offer something to you um, and to help brighten your day to make you know help lighten the load um, or to cheer you up something like that so yeah and I see some of you uh, I don't know if it's reading poetry or writing poetry there's there's something coming out from this experience that's going to be creative for you it's a healing for you it could be journaling um, or writing someone a letter there's something here that you could be doing or will be doing, okay, that can really help to purge. Um, you might be doing, you know, working with candles, uh, rituals, things like that. You might be looking at invocations, um, affirmations, things that can help you to just release what is pent up inside because usually be, you know, behind this kind of energy or not even so much behind it, but what comes out from this energy can be resentment and anger. And sometimes it's a healthy anger. If it's a healthy anger, that's really good because it means it wants to be expressed. And if you're able to do that, you know, some of you might get into a rage and punch a pillow or something. Whatever you need to do, you need to just get it out. Um, so, yeah, and so I see that a good way of doing this too is to write a letter or to just write and pour out your feelings. It doesn't have to be towards anyone in particular. It could be to the universe, whatever it is. Just journaling, writing it all down, getting it out onto paper and then burning it on a full moon and just releasing it to surrendering it to the universe, to the ether. So it's just a, um, a very symbolic, very powerful ritual to do. So let's see, what else can we learn about this week? Thank you, angels. Seven of fire. Yes, you do need to protect your energy against other people. There could be someone who has got toxic energy um, that you just, you know, you might have found out that there's some betrayal. Um, I do feel for a lot of you that there might be a veil lifted from your eyes and you might not like what you see in a person. This is just a, a specific message. There are other messages coming through in this as well. Um Yes, that's interesting. He's wearing two different types of shoes. <laughs> that's so interesting. So he's kind of like got this hiking boot on and then he's got a sneaker. It's almost like he's ready to run. 
Um, so standing strong, it's like a fight or flight uh, situation here for you. So we all have some uh, different way, you know, different ways of reacting or dealing with a situation that could be quite traumatic. Some of us just freeze. Some of us want to fight back. Um, <clears throat> we become defensive and um, sometimes go on the attack. Um, but it could be a flighty situation too where you just want to get the hell out of there. Um, so there could definitely be some challenges regarding having to confront somebody or some some situation where at the moment you can't just get out of it. Um, and, you know, it could be a relationship. It could be a family situation or it could be that you have lost someone um, you know, who has passed away and it's just a really difficult time because you have to grieve it. You have, you know, you've got, you're stuck in those feelings. Um, you need a funeral to go to, you know, it's just having to face something that is really tough right now. Um, you know, you might understand what this is for you. It could be that you're relocating and it's just such a, a really hard thing to have to deal with, or you're coming out of a relationship or you're finding out something about someone that you thought you trusted who is just not trustworthy there's some epiphany or realization that's come to you and it's quite painful. But yeah, it definitely looks like uh, you need to protect your energy against harsh, toxic uh, people, environments, uh, you know, gossip. Uh, people who you thought were your friends, it could be that you feel like you're under psychic attack. So just protecting your energy, calling in Archangel Michael to protect you, which I feel he is anyway. I feel like he is surrounding you to protect you. And knowing that you're stronger, okay, you are quite strong, you can stand up, but sometimes when we're undergoing something, we can feel quite weak and defeated and depleted. Um, but there is definitely support around you. And it's really good to be able to put up that self-protection. And you can do the white light of protection. Put the um, white light around you as well as the blue light. Archangel Michael's blue, excuse me, blue light of protection around you. There are lots of meditation, like guided meditations, visualizations on YouTube. Just type in Archangel Michael blue light of protection or a white light protection meditation. Um, and yeah, you can find some really good ones on there to help you with that. Yeah, wow, look at that. Face your fears. So it could be for some of you that your worst nightmare has be has become realized. Um, so whatever it is that you've been really, you know, dreading in life, it might have come to that point. So it's just about facing, you know, having no choice but to kind of stand up against it. And yeah, with that comes surrender. Wow, wowies, look at that. What did I just say about this? So yeah, confronting something that's not necessarily pleasant. Um... And this is going to be a really challenging time. This is this is really testing your spirit, your resilience, all that kind of thing. But, it, you know, when you come out the other side, you're going to be so much stronger and so much wiser. And ground your energy, okay? So it's time to ground your energy and take a practical approach. So sometimes when something really major happens or if we're undergoing a really tough time and challenges keep just, you know, life just keeps throwing things at us time and time again, over and over, it just seems like we're over, we overcome something and then something else comes in. And it could be something as simple as, you know, like an unexpected bill, like, you know, that comes in, it's like a huge bill that we didn't expect to come in. And it's like, oh my God, how am I going to pay this? And there's all this stress around it. Uh, it could be something like that, just simple like that. And we tend to um, freak out and depending on what the situation is, especially if it's a very traumatic situation, we tend to disassociate. We will detach from our reality. We don't want to face things. It's just too much. It's too hard, too painful. And this is saying just being aware if you're ever feeling in this situation, if you are coming up against something pretty tough, that that you're aware of your surroundings, that you're doing your um, breathing exercises if there's anxiety or panic attacks coming in. It's time to ground your energy. Drink lots of water, go out in nature, sit on the ground, feel the grass in your hands, um, go hug a tree or sit by a tree with your back against the trunk. Um, drink, yeah, as I said, drink lots of water and sometimes eating chocolate helps. <laughs> um, and getting your feet into the soil as well, that can be something, just getting out in nature, breathing the fresh air. If, if anything or, you know, ever seems to be overwhelming, that's a really good way to ground yourself and, yeah, being able to talk to someone who's trustworthy as well because having that support validates you. And what you're feeling, that you're not going crazy, because some people can often feel like, you know, they, they really start to self-doubt and they, 
they don't trust themselves in the end. But look at this. This is beautiful. It will all be okay. So there's a rainbow coming in after the storm. You might even see a rainbow in the sky. This is God's way or the angel's way of saying, we have your back. Everything will be okay. I think that's just beautiful because that's definitely a message we need to hear. Now, what else can we learn about this week, please, Spirit? Just one more card. So, oh my gosh, look at that. Awakening. This is the perspective. This is the selflessness pause. This is the epiphany coming in. This is changing our perspective on something. So out of this is a blessing, okay? Now they do say, um, you know, there's a hidden blessing in disguise. So what seems to be falling apart or a situation that is just feels like the end of the world, you know, when we are faced with something so um, hard to deal with. Um, I mean, it's not to, um, uh, what am I saying, minimize, obviously, if somebody has passed away, obviously that is a very valid uh, reason to be stuck in grief and um, hard to just, you know, overcome it. Um, but if it's just something else, it's a challenge that's really, you know, even if it's a betrayal, there's something that's coming through here where you're going to really see the truth for what it is, you're awakening to it. And some of you will be thinking, how the hell did I not see this, you know? And that's because maybe there was a manipulation from somebody else, um, you know, around you. It could be a friend that you thought you trusted, family member, love relationship. Um, you know, there's so many ways. I have to read this differently because, yeah, there's so many people watching. So everyone has something different going on in their life. But this is the hanged man. So this is talking about... Not making a decision, not rushing into anything impulsively, but unless, as I said, it, unless it's an emergency situation. Um, but there definitely looks like there's this time to think about things and just allow that um, the dark clouds to pass and the sunshine's coming through again and you're going to receive that clarity. It is coming to you. It's just a matter of time. It could be in 12 days. It could be um, hopefully not 12 months, you know, because that could be a whole year. Um, but sometimes it can take people that long to finally get something, but I don't feel it's going to take that long, obviously. It could be 12 weeks, 12 days or 12 weeks where something, um, yeah, just really just, um, shows itself, it's truth to you and you're going to feel relief with this. It's almost like you're feeling relief because now you finally know something or you get it now. Um, yeah, it's almost like we don't want to find out the truth on things. We don't want to have to confront things that it can feel surreal if we're undergoing grief or trauma, um, or just a challenge. If someone's challenging us, it's, it's really, it takes its toll and we have to be strong when we're feeling weak in it. But I do feel like the people are coming in to support you. And I, I do definitely feel here that spirit are coming in to show you the way they're showing you something. Um, and there might be something you have to sacrifice in your life in order to do so. So it could be that you have to let go of, of a bad, toxic relationship in order to find your happiness, um, in order to find what it is you really do want. <clears throat> so what do you need to do? Okay, what is spirit helping you with to do, okay, at this time regarding this? What do you need to focus on right now this week to get over whatever might be going on here? Look at that, sharing of yourself. I am an incredibly generous being. So in other words, don't, don't close down and shut down as to who you truly are. Keep sharing of yourself to those you trust, to your community. You know, it could be an online community. Um, you know, being able to share your experiences when you're ready with others because you could also be helping others and they could be supporting you as well. Um, and there could be like, if, if this is a situation where there's a relationship, there could be for some of you, a third party situation. Maybe that person has chosen somebody else or there was an infidelity, uh, that could be something. Okay. But it's saying sharing of yourself. Don't be afraid to, uh, move into another relationship in time. Okay. And share of yourself because there's so many great qualities about you that somebody else will cherish and, treat with respect um yeah there's so many ways to read it and also what does this say awakening again awakening ancient wisdom deep inner knowing is emerging within me yes you are seriously tapping into ancient wisdom your loved ones your ancestors are with you and they're going to help you realize that 
you can fill your own cup okay you don't have to expect someone else to do that for us sometimes we do go into relationships thinking that someone else can you know um, fill that cup for us but we need to fill our own cup and stand strong in ourself um, because if somebody leaves our life we're not going to feel that huge void like we still have something that we can still um, cherish and use and um, yeah keep um, feeding so it's interesting that message is coming through but I definitely feel like there is this over, like cup runneth over so there's going to be plenty of love support um, and everything if you keep giving to yourself as well um, that's yeah you're feeding your own soul and I feel like that's going to happen by you because it's almost like a spiritual awakening with this situation here and I'm not going to go into too much personal stuff but I remember when I was 21 there was a massive massive betrayal from uh, someone I was in a relationship with back then and he really hurt me and my son and there was infidelity and there was um, a violent situation I was in a domestic violence situation and when I found out some things I am not joking my whole world just it's almost like I immediately shifted into another timeline everything felt so surreal I was in absolute shock because I was in this bubble, okay, where I just was naive and I trusted him and I trusted everything about life and just had no idea about tra like the trauma in relationships. It was my real first experience with it and it was pretty bad stuff. Uh, so coming to that realization, I remember disassociating and I remember just freaking the hell out and nobody was there to tell me how to ground my energy. I was actually spiritually awakening at that time. I was really getting into my spiritual affirmations. That's what helped to actually bring it all about. Actually, I was doing affirmations for truth, justice, safety and protection and enlightenment. Um, and I sure got it. <laughs> oh my God, I got it. And so what I'm saying here is that I had no choice but to face what was going on because it was very real um, but it was also very surreal as well and I, I actually well you know what I'm here and I got over it and I was able to move on and I was able to extremely like seriously in a very fast way grow up um, and realize that the world is quite cruel and there are some evil people in the world you know they do very evil acts and that was something that I feel like my spirit guides, I, I really felt them so much around me. I was opening up to them. But there, that was a spiritual awakening for me because I was even seeing things in the clouds, like so vivid. Um, I was literally getting signs right in front of me. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, so we have to be open to that. We have to be open to spiritual mentors as well that can help us on our spiritual path. We have to open up to the angels and our spirit guides and God or whoever it is, Allah, whoever you believe in, okay? Um, it could be anything. It could be the gods, goddesses. Call them in. Um, if you don't believe in anything, just call in your higher self and um, know that someone or something has your back. You're not alone in this journey. And you do have extreme wisdom within you coming in. And it's from past lives as well. So sometimes we know things without knowing how we know them. <laughs> so it's, it's funny how that works. Like suddenly in a situation where we need survival or, you know, something will come in, some epiphany, some blessing, uh, just knowing, a knowing, okay, of something. It's our soul reminding us that you've got this. You are a warrior. You can overcome this. This is a test, okay? This is a test from the universe. And so from that moment on, I was able to move into another connection and I did share of myself. I was able to trust, not fully, but it, you get there, okay? You get there. Um, same with people who have stabbed me in the back, like friendships and that. You learn discernment along the way. This is how you grow. You're growing into that wisdom. You learn, don't you? You learn certain patterns of behavior that will not be accepted. You, you learn when someone is shady, but sometimes there are very manipulative, very clever people who come in like snakes and they are so good at just pulling the wool over everybody's eyes. I call them sociopaths and narcissists, you know, that kind of thing. So just being really aware of people because when you're an empath and you're a beautiful soul, 
We are a target for people like that. People who can be very envious but smiling in our faces but they're envious of us and gossiping behind our backs. I mean, it's horrible energy but so what, you know, you know, it just means they're jealous of what you're doing. But, you know, it can affect us if there's psychic attacks and things like that. Uh, someone wishing ill health or the, what are they called, the evil eye or something. So you are protected though. I don't mean to scare you at all. Uh, we are protected at the end of the day and you just need to to use that. Be able to meditate, call in your guides, call in your angels, call in Archangel Michael and just ask for that protection and just know that it's with you and know that you can use discernment and try to raise your vibration through being around good people, good environments and um, good music <laughs> and comedies, things, you know, when I feel down, I always watch funny animal videos, they just crack me up and I just instantly feel like my energy has shifted. I don't feel so down about something. I'm, I'm now laughing my head off about these cute little creatures. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, one more thing. Two of Earth. Balance, prioritization, playfulness. So some of you might want to go to the beach and just balance your energy. Sit in the sand, put your feet in the water, go for a swim. Just, you know, sit on the sand, watch the horizon, the sunset, whatever it might be. Um, maybe getting out near a lake, whatever it is. Look at the butterflies coming in. So the butterflies, you can have specific butterflies around you. And I know they're everywhere, right? But sometimes you really do notice, like, a butterfly that's just out of place. Like, um, one day I had one at, the, at my back door on the cement there. And I was out there, and I think that was when I was smoking back back when, back then, in the old days. <laughs> maybe seven years ago or something. But anyway, I was at the back. And I had this little beautiful, um, I think it was an orange and black butterfly just sitting there on the ground. And I was worried about him at first, but he was just sitting there having a rest. And then he just went off on his path, you know, and he, he sat there for ages. Um, so, and one day I had one also land on my shirt when I was walking and he was just sitting there for ages. He didn't fly off so fast. It's just things like that that you notice like, wow, hello, you know, you're a little friend. Um, not just, not just butterflies flying around a bush, you know, this is something significant. So you could be seeing these come in right around you, flying around you. This is spirit's way of saying we're with you and there's transformation taking place and, and you're okay through this. You're going to be okay through the transition. We're bringing in balance into your life. We're going to help you ground your energy and find your footing in something here. All right, one more message. Yes, nostalgia. So a lot of you might be feeling nostalgic about the past. Um, it could be, well, hang on. It could be that you do look back and wish that you had made different decisions. Uh, I know I do that all the time. I regret certain things I've made in the past. Um, decisions I've made, people I've, you know, stepped into a relationship with or people I've trusted who have just totally turned my life upside down and really just damaged me in so many ways. Um, but there is this nostalgia even for the good times in life as well, hoping you could, you know, um, find that again and reinvent yourself, you know. So I do feel like there can be good from this as well, like reminiscing on the happier times and trying to find yourself back in that happy mode again. Um, so, yeah, maybe this saying that what we need to do is focus on a happy memory instead of the bad memories, try and replace it with a good memory um, and try and um, bring that back into our life. And obviously it's going to be maybe with a different person or uh, different experiences, but it'll be the same kind of feeling where you feel like yourself again. Um, because a lot of us have lost ourselves on the, on the journey, on the way. Um, but you don't have to have lost yourself. This is a really great opportunity with whatever's going on here to re-find yourself again, okay? To rediscover who you are and remember who you are. Because we do lose, lose ourselves in an illusion, in another reality that we think is real. Then we find out, holy shit, that's not real. Not what, what, not what it was cracked up to be. Or not what I thought it was cracked up to be. <coughs> There's actually this truth coming through. And... Um, you look at the full moon here as well, so it definitely shows that around the full t full moon is when you could be feeling very nostalgic, and it's a time to surrender things. It could be a, a bit of a bittersweet feeling, um, but you're going to overcome this. Everything will be okay, and you've just got to go through the motions because when we refuse or resist, it just comes back up again another time. 
and sometimes it just won't go away and we're just tormenting ourselves with that. So the sooner we can kind of sit down and, and just face something, accept something, go through the motions of um, dealing with our pain, counselling, talking to someone, watching comedies, um, journaling something, talking to people, uh, learning discernment along the way, you know, uh, developing a very strong connection with those in spirit around us our loved ones in spirit, our spirit guides, having a strong connection with them can help us get through in life. And um, I really do feel that, really, I do feel like there's really good things coming here. I really do. And if you lose yourself on the journey and you, and you drink or something and you go on a spiral where you start drinking or something you just don't want to be doing, that's just, that's okay, okay? Don't beat yourself up too much about it. Let go with grace. Look at this. Let go with grace. So you will learn to let go of this. And this is why, okay, when you show yourself compassion, you are able to connect with others with an open heart. So you can form these special bonds again. Um, and also we can become a little hard in ourselves when somebody or an experience is really tough to handle. We can become a little hard. We do shut down a bit. But we can learn to open up again once we're able to let go with grace and not want to carry something anymore. So, wow, this is such a deep reading today. Wow, wheeze. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if this has triggered anything, okay? I meant to say that, that sometimes these things can be a trigger. So if it is a trigger, talk to somebody. If you need to book in a counselling session, do that. You know, um, surround yourself with good people and support. Drink some water right now after this. Do a meditation if you need to. Watch a funny animal video. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and um, I will look forward to connecting with you guys next time. Sending you loads of love. Mwah! Love and blessings, guys. We'll catch up next week.